I've already made a previous video showing that you can indeed cook these um, TV dinners in the um, rice and butter cooking system. But I thought I'd go ahead and make another video just because I'm getting ready to cook right now and some people are tuning in and haven't looked at the old videos, which I do recommend that you look at. Um, you know, if you're new to the channel, you want to watch um, all the van build episodes where you can learn how the van was put together. And then, um, if you want to make sure you catch pretty much everything, you want to watch the um, uh, vlogs for living in a van. The ones that say vlogs or vlog. Um, that should bring you all the way up to the present day. Anyhow, um, these are some um, Salisbury steak with mashed potatoes that I got from um, Dollar Tree. So they were only a dollar each. I know that one of them is not going to fill me up, so I'm going to have two of them um, for dinner tonight. I'll be cooking it up in the um, rice cooker right here, which will be set on, well, on the actual rice cooker itself back there. And I just need to turn the inverter on, turn my vehicle on, turn the inverter on and whatnot. I do have a little bit of leftover rice from earlier today, which I will eat with the um, Salisbury steak to give myself a really filling dinner. The first thing I did was to empty the contents of the boxes into this container. You can see it was kind of melted because it was frozen. I had left it in the car while I was in the library, letting it thaw out a little bit. Essentially, the food's already done. All we're going to do is warm it up in the rice cooker. So I've got it here, and I'm going to put it right into our rice cooker right over there. I have um, put the pot in there and mounted the... Um, bungee cords here to hold it in place and now all that remains to do is to start up the vehicle and turn on the um, inverter cooking system. To start the system I um, put my key in my car, ignition, turn it on. Engine is now on which means the house battery, I mean the vehicle battery is charging. And now I want to connect the um, cooking system or the house system with the engine recharging. So I'm going to turn this switch on. Okay, those of you who are new to the channel and want to see how all this is set up, you'll want to watch the um, van build episodes. Um, and the cooking with the Noi videos will show the, the cooking system and how it was set up. Notice that um, throwing the cooking, I mean the um, light switch on, did not start up the, um, the rice cooker. That's because the uh, inverter back here still needs to be turned on. I don't know if you can see that, the inverter's back here. Let me get out of the car to show you what it looks like. I've um, thrown the switch to connect the vehicle battery to this house battery, which is located in here in this box. And this extra battery that I have as an auxiliary battery, they're just tied together. Anyhow, um, to turn the inverter on, I just hold this button down. I got a bad switch or something. I gotta clean this contact. Try that again. There we go. The inverter comes on and you'll see it's pulling 27, 26, 27 watts, which means the rice cooker is on warm mode. So I'm gonna go switch the rice cooker on to um, the high mode to cook. The rice cooker is on right now, but it's in low mode. To put it into high mode, I just see the switch here, I throw it down. Right now it's in, um, there we go. I don't know if you can hear the inverter there kicking in, but it's in high mode, so it's going to pull 300 watts now. You can see by our inverter rate, right, it's actually pulling 322 watts right now to cook. Um, so the system is now operational. This um, inverter is a 750 watt, which I recommend getting that as a minimum if you're going to set up a system like this. You only need about 350 watts to actually cook, but um, it doesn't hurt to have a little extra. Anyhow, uh, I'm gonna let it cook here for a bit. It should be done in about 10, 15 minutes. I thought I'd go ahead and uh, film the drive for those of you who are curious as to what things look like around here in uh, Cocoa Beach. It is about 8 p.m., maybe 8.15 p.m. Not that busy, really. It's uh, Tuesday.
you would think being a tourist spot, there'd be a lot more activity, but there really isn't that much. Um, Cocoa Beach is kind of quiet. Now, around the Ron Johns area, we might see more people. But even there, it's not anywhere like um, in a place like Orlando where, you know, even at night, it's got people walking around on a, like International Drive or something. This is Lori Wilson Park. Pretty cool place to visit if you've never been here before. And hang out there and have a picnic. I think I um, might have covered it in a previous episode. I think that's where I met um, Secret Agent Man. And did the interview with him. Food is still cooking. It's been about maybe about five minutes or so. Remember, all we're doing essentially is heating it up. We're not actually cooking, cooking, um, because the food's already cooked and just frozen, and we're just thawing it out and heating it. Now the rice cooker does get hot enough that it could cook raw meat. I've cooked um, steaks. I've cooked pork chops. I've cooked hamburger. Wow, look at that big airplane in the sky. It's heading over to probably the um, Patrick Air Force Base, which is near here. I think I'll go ahead and shut off the camera for now until I get to Ron John's because this is kind of unsafe. We are approaching Ron John's. It's next to the um, Sheridan's Four Points. Sheridan's Four Points um, resort here. And the next building here is Ron John's, this funky looking building. Now what's cool about Ron John's is they have free parking right here, which I'm getting ready to pull into. Apparently, most of the parking is taking up on this side tonight. So we may have to go around. Oh, this whole area here is free parking. Otherwise, you have to go and pay the metered parking for Cocoa Beach. Looks like all the parking is filled. So there's a lot of people at the beach today. Don't know if they're tourists or regulars, locals. I am going to try to come around here and see if I can't get into um, find parking here. And there is at least one which I'm going to take right now. This is um, Ron John's free parking. It says 90 li minute l limit, which they say is strictly enforced, but I don't think they actually enforce it. And the reason they put that time limit on it is because the city of Cocoa charges people to park. Because people park here to act and then, you know, walk over to the beach. So the city of Cocoa is making money off people parking. And Ron Johns is giving away free parking. While the food is cooking, I can either just sit here and let the vehicle idle. Or I can actually drive around, which I'm getting ready to do. I think I'm going to drive over to Ron John's. Um, I'm currently at the Cocoa Beach Library. Uh, trying to upload videos and try to get the uh, vlogs and everything all caught up. Um, we're obviously quite a bit behind. Um, but I'm doing my best to try to get them all up. So I, I um, appreciate you guys bearing with me. But, you know, the, the vlogs themselves go in sequence. So they kind of let you know what happened. Um... And um, if I have any emergency or any uh, sudden changes, what I'll do is just cut right in and, you know, do a quick um, out-of-sequence update. But right now I am currently um, working at Cocoa Beach. Not Cocoa Beach, at Coco. As a handyman at a um, mobile home park. Basically assisting the handyman there with um, fixing the units up and painting them and preparing them for the next tenants. Um, it is a part-time job that will keep me there for hopefully several months. Um, but I tend to hang out on the beach side just because I prefer hanging out here on the beach side versus hanging out around Coco. Coco is kind of run down and not exactly um, the best place to be. 
but uh, Cocoa Beach is kind of fun. Um, there's the beach, Ron John's, a lot of tourist things. But the main thing is the beach. I also have access to shower if I need to. Um, so right now I'm just here to um, go to the library and upload and they closed. So I'm letting the food cook and I will be hanging out at Ron John's waiting for the food to cook. That's where I plan on having dinner tonight. Meanwhile, you can see our food is um, cooking right now. It's like starting to boil, bubble and boil in there. I think what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and flip the meat over and stir up the gravy and the um, mashed potatoes to try to get it to mix and, and get it thoroughly um, warmed up. Can't do it with um, the camera running because i got to use you know, two hands here. So let me go ahead and um, pause the camera for now. I've um, kind of mixed things up and it looks pretty bad, doesn't it? <laughs> so essentially tonight we're eating um, slush uh, that's pretty bad looking anyhow I'm, I'm gonna um, take that um, the mashed potato gravy thing and just mix it in with my rice here so I got a lot of starch I do need to pick up some veggies or something and um, two Salisbury steaks the um, rice cooker didn't pop. It's still on cook mode, but just let me turn off the music. I hope that music doesn't um, cause me to have a copyright thing. The rice cooker didn't pop yet, but you can see the food is like pretty hot and steaming. So I'm going to assume it's done because it was already cooked. All we're doing is warming it up and I'm going to assume it's warm enough to eat now. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the system down and then get the food and start eating. Alright, so here then is our slushy food tonight. <laughs> so appetizing, isn't it? I'm just going to um, pour some of the um, gravy and uh, mashed potatoes in here with the rice and then just eat it with the, the meat. I know it looks terrible, but... You know, it tastes okay, and it is food, and I'm hungry, so I think it'll be fine. Until next time, everybody, I hope you're eating something better than I am. <laughs> but um, it is possible to cook the, um, the TV dinners using the rice cooker.